what up youtube it's your boy neo back again with another guide on outriders uh today we're gonna be talking about the trickster uh the build i have been running and it is not a bullet build um it's still a work in progress but we've pretty much fleshed out what we want to focus on and then it kind of leaves it open for you to manipulate it how you want to depending on your play style as always if you haven't already hit that subscribe button uh every subscribe means a lot to me i'm working towards a thousand so that i can get monetized and i can start making better content with the money that i receive from these youtube videos so again appreciate you all for the support hit that subscribe button check me out on twitch discord if you want to talk when i'm not streaming i stream monday through friday every week uh again the links will be down below but let's get right into this guide all right gang we're in game this is my trickster character we've been playing it on stream for the last two three days now uh we beat the story day one we beat the hunts was it the hunts yeah it was the hunts and world tier leveling in the last two days and we did some expos today um but we're gonna go in depth with this build which i can currently already clear tier 10 ct10 expos um and like i said i made the character on monday so like the build works the build's viable you can switch things around with what you get in terms of mods and what you want to work with with your playstyle. so there's a lot of flexibility here, but the build is an anomaly melee focused build. It, it revolves around your cyclone ability, cyclone, cyclone slice. Uh, this is your bread and butter, your main damage. Uh, you, the focus is this ability right here. Um, when I'm running these CT10s, which I will show you one after we talk about the build, this is where most of my damage comes from uh hunt the prey is really good mobility and also with one of your passives in the class tree uh which i will show in a second it increases your anomaly power by a little 50 percent for a substantial amount of time like 10 seconds so that not only is it utility but it also makes you stronger for when you're fighting elites or just you need a burst in damage um then i've been running venator's knife now you can run borrowed time for more utility instead of venator's knife uh i was running that for a little bit and it gives you a little more survivability and utility because you can if you ever get in a moment where you're you're caught out you're in too deep you can just tell you back to where you started with borrowed time um it can save your life quite a few scenarios that saved mine uh however with venator's knife you have more damage capability mainly because of the passive that is in the class tree that we're using so um it's up to you what you want to run i prefer venator's knife but like i said borrowed time works uh you can use some of these other like temporal blade later on when i get the set bonus that i want from gear temporal blade might be mixed in here May, might even replace venator's knife but for the time being this is what we're running and this is what we ran to get to ct10 um now for the class tree we are running the bottom reaver tree okay uh we pretty much pick up everything here besides a couple things we don't get assault master we don't get atrophy we don't get a not animal acceleration i can't I, i'm not even uh, anomalic anomalic I, I i'm sure i butchered that don't make me weird read weird words on my youtube please thank you outriders uh and shadows embrace the, these are the four that we do not get everything else we get in this tree uh concentration for anomaly power that's a given you i mean your whole build is anomaly power you want that uh resistance piercing you want that that's helping you to deal more damage with your cycle cyclone slice man we're gonna have a lot 
of babu beep word mix-ups in this youtube video aren't we anyways uh so we run through and we pick up all these concentrations i focused on this path here before uh picking anything else up as i was leveling so if you want to do that you can do so um <clears throat> cooldown reduction is a must cooldown reduction is huge in this build because your whole build revolves around your skills so you you want as much cdr as you can get uh we're also running skill leech in the tree uh, it helps out quite a bit for survivability these two perks alone drastically increase your survivability um you wouldn't know even know until you use it but it, it makes a huge difference uh, and then we're not using weapons so we i didn't go for the firepower and um you don't need firepower in this build we'll talk more about that when we get to the gun that i'm using but yeah not needed resistance piercing obviously you want uh these two are are what i was mentioning in the skills though these two passives here when you activate a deception skill, increase your anomaly power by 50% for 10 seconds. When you activate a movement skill, increase your anomaly power by 50% for 10 seconds. That's 100% damage increase for 10 seconds when you pop both of these. So, as you can imagine, the combo is you throw the Venator knife. I'm probably butchering that, but, but uh, you throw the knife, then you blink to the target, and then you spin to win. That's the build. That you will melt bosses with this build, especially if you have the 25% increased damage mod to elites on one of your gear pieces. But the, these two right here drastically increase your damage output when you need to have it. So um, definitely want those. Those are those are must have. Uh, the resistance piercing you could go without if you wanted to go elsewhere um you could try and go without skill leech if you wanted to but i've found that it's way better than like for instance i was running weakness before and that didn't seem to do as well as this skill leech so it's it's up to you um this is just what i prefer now for the gi obviously we're not in complete end game build yet but um, I can show you what I'm kind of working with and what you can kind of strive for while you're playing through the leveling process and whatnot. For substats, I've been focusing on anomaly power, CDR, and close range damage. Close range damage is a must. I mean, you're a melee spin to win build. Everything that you fight is in your face. Close range is a must. I mean, all your damage is going to be close range. Uh, anomaly power it's an anomaly power build i mean obviously you want anomaly power makes sense now for the cdr you could mix and match what you want here i think you could do skill leech as well but having cdr is really nice i have cdr on every those doggos i have cdr on everything that i can right now i'm only missing it from the pants these pants aren't that great to be honest um but cdr obviously you're using your skills that's what you want to focus on and uh, but you can run skill leech i haven't tried it it will give you more survivability but you're sacrificing having your skills up more often so and uh, I mean, you got, got to kind of balance that and play with it and see uh, what works for you. Now, as for mods, Captain Hunter, definitely want. Now, for mods, Captain Hunter, definitely want it. Uh, it when you can get it, you want it. The extra 25% damage to elites, no matter what build you're running, is amazing. Must have. We're running a defensive perk here, but to be completely honest, this mod... Not... Or wait, this is offensive. Increase your resistance piercing. But either way, this this mod isn't that great. Uh, it's just a placeholder for now. I haven't gotten a better drop. 
um <clears throat> shield zap is really nice because with this build you're constantly getting shield especially if you did the same class tree as me uh when you are dealing damage with your melee instead of regening health you gain shield and anytime your shield's active this is going to deal damage it's just innate damage um easily drop two to four mil damage with just shield zap in tier 10 runs so um definitely think this is worth running again this is another placeholder mod we're not going to talk about that one mm. hunt the prey decrease skill cooldown by 20 percent very nice to have uh because hunt the prey is your only utility movement if you're running the same skills as me if you're not running the other teleport uh what i don't even remember what it's called beyond time or whatever skill uh this is your only utility having it on cooldown is really nice uh this is a must-have mod increase the skill damage it like this is your main source of damage so you want it i mean there's no other way to put it you you want this mod this is another placeholder mod these both of these mods very important mods um psych uh duration adds five seconds to cyclone slice uh obviously that's awesome since that's your main damage the more you can have it up the better and then grand bastion uh using the skill reduces incoming damage and of weapon and anomaly by 40 percent that that's a must have it makes you so much more tankier when you're using cyclone slice and especially when you're fighting like mobs that have guns this is going to keep you alive while you're spinning through all the mobs to regain health uh definitely a must have for your weapon you're not really using weapons i'm gonna be completely honest with you if you're doing this build you're not you're not shooting really at all ever the only time i ever shoot is the one or two seconds that my skills are down i'll shoot to activate shadow comet now you can use skills like storm whip or um deadly disturbance any of the abilities that just deal raw damage on w one of your shots every th like three seconds five seconds two seconds uh for me i haven't gotten deadly disturbance shadow comet is one of the only ones i've gotten i do have storm whip and claymore but shadow comet hits harder so that's why we're running it basically if you i'm fighting like a strix which you'll probably see out in the distance i'll hit it with one bullet from the lmg and then my cooldowns are back so i can just tell you in and fight with melee and i don't need to shoot anymore but generally you the like these don't matter at all you aren't using your guns at all um that pretty much sums up what you're looking at for the build now let's show it to you in action all right we are running a tier 10 archways of enoch i feel like this is one of the easier um expeditions that you can do so i'm going to show you what this build looks like we're going to play through the whole thing and you can kind of see where it's strong and where it's weak and i i'm going to give you a little spoiler it's weak against range but it's still really strong and it's really fun i think this build is more fun than the pyromancer build that i showed you guys last week let's do this boys and girls You can see the uh, comet doing doing work. We don't really waste our abilities too much on these little guys. That's what we were waiting for. Knife, Telly, 
spin to win. You can see we're hitting 28 Ks. Constant. Almost one shot that broodmother in one spin. Then you can melee after throwing another knife. Dead. That's a tier 10 broodmother that we just completely mopped the floor with. Spin to win to clear out these mobs. We're just meleeing because it's way stronger than our gun. Besides the comet. Spin to win. Melee's OP. And we cleared that. We didn't really have to use our abilities too much. We just kind of melee that room. The gate opened. <clears throat> nice view. On to the next. You can kind of see how crazy strong this is. This build is a lot more fun because you're in the action, in my opinion, rather than just sitting back holding the trigger, you know? Nothing quite like spinning through a bunch of mobs and just watching them all fall. And then meleeing for a hundred K. Come on now. What's nice about Shadow Comet, unlike Deadly Disturbance, is that you don't need to hit a crit for it to proc. So you can just shoot one bullet, and it'll drop it on the mobs. And it's an AoE just like Deadly Disturbance, so it does quite a bit of damage. Easy peasy. Broodmother is nothing. Easily clear out the other ones with the comet. We're almost.
almost done with this room. Spin to win on the alpha. And that should do it for this room. As you can see, we're not shooting really at all. But our clear time is still really good. We're making great time. Just tally in. We pop both of our two and three abilities and then we just spin to win. Throw them again. Melee. Tally. Melee. Drop a comet. Bosses are down. We use the uh, mod on our on our gun to take out the Strix because they're a pain in the ass. Spin to win, double brood mother, easy. No problem for us. Melee to finish him off. Get out of that AOE. Sometimes your telly doesn't work. And it can really screw you over, but most of the time it works. Pop both abilities, then spin to win. And then it's just Strix left. And that's that. Tier 10. Cleared it with ease. Not a problem. And that is the strength of the spin to win. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we got anything good for the YouTube. For the two. Ooh, we pulled a legendary 
for the tube. What did we pull? I don't think I've ever had that. Molten Idola. I butchered that. Not a bad weapon to run with this build since we're not really using a gun anyways. It only has one bullet. Very cool. Anyways, and yeah, that's the build. Um, I don't really have anything else to say on the subject. The build is obviously not finished yet because we still haven't gotten the set piece. But this was just to show you how to get to at least CT10, you know? You'll be able to climb the ladder with this build instead of just running the generic bullet build like everyone else. This is a build that I came up with on my own um, that you could have too. It's not that complicated, but it's... Uh, it's it's a lot more fun than just holding the left mouse button or holding your right trigger on your controller um you're actually interacting and you're constantly using skills uh very fun for me i i highly recommend trying out the build um you feel pr nothing like clearing like 20 mobs in a row all at once with the spin to win if you like the build, let me know. If you don't like the build, let me know in the comments or in the Discord, which is linked below. Um, you have anything else you want to see me do for Outriders? Again, comments below. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Catch you next time, probably Saturday or Sunday on YouTube. Or if you're fancy, in my Twitch channel when I stream tomorrow and or Friday. Uh... That's all I got for you. Later, YouTube.